Here's a feature of WinDebug that is often overlooked. Let me give you an introduction to time travel debugging. So, time travel debugging sure has a cool name. The meaning of time travel debugging is that WinDebug can step backwards when debugging. That's right, WinDebug can step backwards when debugging. Time travel debugging is a bit complicated, so let's start with the basics, which is stepping backwards from an exception event. What we cannot view while using time travel debugging is the user interface for the program. So for this example, I have written a program with a very simple user interface that we don't need to see while we are trying to step backwards in WinDebug. So let's get started. Let me switch to my instance of WinDebug that is ready to start time travel debugging. So to start time travel debugging, what we need to do is we need to launch the executable under the advanced option over here. The reason is we need this additional option called record with time travel debugging. Now, you might have observed that my version of WinDebug is the WinDebug preview version, which has this option called uh, time travel debugging. If you are using the classical version of WinDebug that does not have time travel debugging, then it's actually not possible to start time travel debugging. You have to use the version of WinDebug that you can get from the Windows Store I believe it was called the version uh, WinDebug Preview when I downloaded it. But if you get the absolute latest version of WinDebug from the Windows Store, you will have time travel debugging. I will put a link in the description below exactly to which version of WinDebug you can use to get time travel debugging. Okay, let's go ahead and start time travel debugging. What I've done is I've written an executable to show how time travel debugging works. Any executable that you can debug in WinDebug is eligible. Just put the link to the uh, executable over here. I put the full path to the uh, executable. The important thing to do is click record with time travel debugging and click configure. Now you will get a dialog that opens on the screen. Let me just adjust my capture software so that uh, you can actually see the, uh, the dialog. There we are, the dialogs on the screen. The capture software doesn't capture the dialogue properly, but uh, what it's asking you is that it's, it's asking for a location. The location is to save the traces of the time travel debugging. Um, put any location you want, but make sure this is a location that WinDebug can write to without any special privileges. So I've just put uh, the a documents folder and I just called it time travel. Then press record. What this does is that it will start WinDebug and it will start another dialog. Let me just show you that dialog. Um, give me a sec. My recording software will not capture it immediately. There we are. So you get another recording dialog over here. This second recording dialog that appears here that says the word uh, recording on it. Do not close this dialog. So this dialog is to inform the user that if you click stop and debug over here, the program will be killed and the debugger will be broken into. If you click cancel, the program will be killed and the debugger won't step in. Either way, do not click anything on this dialog, just leave it aside and uh, don't touch it. Instead, what we want to do is we want to simulate our exceptions using the program that we have just launched. So in my case, what I've done is my program just has one button here and if I click this button many times, eventually it will generate an exception. I will use time travel debugging to step backwards to deduce why the exception occurred. So let me go ahead and do that. So I'm going to click it about five times. One, two, three, four, five. So nothing happens on the screen. WinDebug does not break in. That's correct. We are going to use time travel debugging. So when I press OK over here, WinDebug will step in and begin the time travel. So, once WinDebug breaks in, we'll notice that there is something a bit different about the uh, user interface. There is an additional menu at the bottom called Timelines. This is because WinDebug is not attached to the process anymore. What WinDebug has done is open the tracings that was recorded when the program was running. What we see is that we have a timeline over here 
and we have two red triangles here. These red triangles represent exceptions that occurred. The first thing I do when time travel debugging appears is I click on the menu time travel and I click on index trace. What this does is that it runs a command to actually index all the memory. I do this because it speeds up WinDebug. You don't necessarily have to do it, but if your trace is very large, definitely click this button. I, I just do it all the time out of habit. But um, if you have a very small trace and you don't index it, um, that's perfectly fine. It's just an optimization to search memory. Now let's go back to the uh, home. So in home, I have all the controls up here to control the debugging. But notice there's additional buttons. There is a go. Go is the same thing as any other debugging. It's just to travel forward. But there's also a go back. What these buttons do is that if I press go, the program will actually run to the very end. That's, that's what this timeline represents. It ran to the end. But if I press go back, it actually runs backwards back to the start. This means I can repeat part of the program over and over again in the debugger to try to analyze what happened. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's analyze why the exception occurred. So if I click on this red triangle over here, what will happen is the program will actually advance to the point of where the triangle is. So now that I've done that, you can see that the, um, the triangle over here says that the timeline is on this point here. This means that at this point over here with this position number here, these are like relative indexes. They don't actually represent time. At this relative index over here, the program encountered an exception. Let's take a look at the uh, function that threw the exception. So if I just run km over here, uh, what will happen is um, the stack at this point, uh, it was captured and put into the trace file. So this means I can actually go up the stack over here and I can see there we are, raise exception. Um, we threw an exception from this function called do something. I, I wrote this function, so I have the source code. So if I click on, on this point over here, I see that the function do something has got a throw uh, runtime exception. Now this is where time travel debugging is really awesome. Let me just make the screen a bit bigger. So I can see from the logic of this function that if m counter is more than 3, it will throw a runtime exception. Now just imagine I wanted to go backwards and see this value increment. How do I do that? If I put a breakpoint over here like that, well, the program is already run past that point. So if I want to go backwards, this is where time travel debugging becomes really important because it has a feature in which I can arbitrarily jump to a position. So how I do that is I click on the uh, triangle again. I get this position over here. If I take this position like that and I run TT and I put that position, the program will run exactly to this point. But what if I reversed it backwards? So I'm going to change this 9 to just say I'm going to call put 0. So this is a position before. And if I run this, what will happen is the program will move backwards. So now the arrow over here is slightly before where the position is. If I press go, it will hit the breakpoint. I can even inspect the variable itself. If I type uh, dv, I get a this, press this, there we are m counter is value of 3 and if value of 3 go plus plus is going to be value of 4 and then that's going to throw the runtime exception. Now if I wanted to monitor the value of counter all the way back in the beginning of the program, well what I can do is I can just remove the breakpoint over here and I can just press go back and we'll go back to the start and if I put the breakpoint over here and I press go, I can see that at this position over here, this function was called one time. If I press go again, it was called a second time, like I can inspect the variable over here again, if I want to. There we are, it's a value of 1. If I press go again, it can go another time. And if I press go again, it's going to be the exception. So it's really, really handy because I can always go back and run the function over and over again to see what caused the exception. Now, a real handy trick is that if I run forward, I can step through the function many times. That also works backwards. Like if I'm at the point of the exception over here, I can actually click go back and it will go back one time and hit this function again. If I press go back again, it will go back another time and hit this function again. So it's really handy so that 
at any point in time, if you're at a breakpoint, you can just press go back and go to the previous breakpoint. The TT command that I used previously, there is another shortcut for the TT command. If you just type, oh, let me just click it again. If you just type TT with a number, just say I'm going to put 30, it will jump back 30%. At this point, you are in a position in the program where you may not know where it is. Um, so it is quite handy to do this if you want to jump a large section and you don't know where the jump should be. You can just put 30% or 20%. If you have a very long dump, it will jump quite far. Again, from this um, random position over here, I can just put a breakpoint. Let me just put a different breakpoint over here and just press go and it will go to that breakpoint. So it's pretty handy. You can just use the percentage to jump anywhere or you can just use the go and the go back to jump to different positions. Um, you can loop it round and round if you really cannot figure out uh, what's happening. If it's a very complicated scenario, you can keep trying over and over again, making different breakpoints until you try to figure out what is the root cause of the bug you're trying to analyze. This also works for the regular navigation buttons over here. Step out, step into, step over. All these buttons work exactly the same way. But there are three additional buttons, which is step out back, step into back, and step over back. So step over back just means go backwards. So it just goes back one instruction. Really, really handy if the root cause is there. Step out back is even more awesome. It goes one entire function backwards. So this function do something, it goes back one entire frame. So really handy if you want to find out what called this function, if there was any bad parameters or anything like that, you can use step out back and just travel backwards from the breakpoint. So this is the gist of time travel debugging when debugging exceptions. Time travel debugging is very complicated and there is a lot more about time travel debugging. I wanted to restrict the first video to just be about exceptions. I will make more videos about time travel debugging, especially videos about module loading, attaching to a process, capturing traces from the middle of a process, and all the more advanced techniques in a future video. Um, the reason is because there is just way too much about time travel debugging. And if I made one video with everything in it, this video might be way too long. It's best to just start with something simple like debugging exception. Now, this feature I actually have not used much. The reason is the classical win debug, which I've been using for years, never had time travel debugging. This is something new, something that I will start using from now onwards, but it, I wish it existed 20 years ago. It would have made a lot of debugging problems really, really simple. But I can see the power of time travel debugging, especially just stepping backwards. That capability alone is gold when trying to debug a very complicated problem. Have you used time travel debugging before? If you have, let me know in the comments below how it went and let me know any advanced techniques that you used when you were trying time travel debugging. Gentle reminder to subscribe, hit that bell icon and give a like if you like the content. As always, it's been a pleasure bringing you this information. I am High Voice, signing out.